Ime Shu with My Allergy Advocate here. This is the third video of a series on celiac disease and still sick. Yes, if you are in that category where you find that you've done everything you've been told to do, you're on a standard gluten-free diet, you try to be very, very careful to make certain that you're not having any new gluten exposures, and you've taken a look at where you eat, how you eat, making certain everything's clean, and you're still sick, there may be something else going on. And what I want to talk to you about today is that something else. So if you haven't watched the other two videos, and you haven't determined who should be telling you what to eat and why, watch those two videos first, then come on back. Now let's talk about leaky gut syndrome. So what leaky gut syndrome is, is when your gut basically is very permeable. It means that instead of food coming through and sliding in and being digested properly, that celiac disease has left your veli both suppressed, so it's kind of squished down and not very good at absorbing food, but also that that gluten has punched holes right through your gut. And instead of having very tight junctures there that keep food within the small intestine, food keeps leaking through. That's why it's called leaky gut. And not just gluten or those gluten proteins, but other inflammatory foods. So it can leak out into your abdominal cavity. It can even go beyond there to other parts of the body. You get this full body inflammatory process. It is very uncomfortable and is very unpleasant. So the focus here should be on healing that leaky gut. And one of the ways that you could do that is to look at all the different foods that you're eating and determine if any of them have inflammatory properties. And there's a whole bunch of different foods that can do that. And you and your doctor or you and your nutritionist can look at those different foods and go on what's called an elimination provocation diet. So for at least about three months, sometimes longer, you're going to eliminate all of these inflammatory foods all at once. Not just a little bit, all at once. Super restrictive. It's hard, but there are lots of support groups out there. I know because I was in one of them where I eliminated all the foods. And then after that time goes by and your gut heals and you start to feel better, and you should, when that's happened, you can go back and one by one from the bottom of the list, meaning the ones that you suspect you're the least reactive to, you're going to introduce them one by one and see if there's a reaction to them. So after a number of months of having no reactivity, having a really happy gut, you're going to reintroduce one at a time and usually multiple times just to make certain. And if you have no reaction, guess what? You can probably have that food back in again. If you have a reaction to it, then you don't want to eat that food. You're going to put it back on the elimination list, rotate it back out. And so the hope is that as your immune system gets stronger and your gut gets stronger because it's healed, you will be able to reintroduce a lot of these foods back in. There will be some that you may never be able to introduce in simply because there's just been a lot of damage and then you've built a, an intolerance to it. So it's maybe not as likely that you'll get that food back. And certainly not foods that you are truly food allergic to, which those are life-threatening um, reactions that you have. Of course, you're not going to want to do the elimination provocation diet on that. Again, speak with your physician, with an asthma or allergy doctor, or with your nutritionist about this. So I hope that that is a helpful direction for you to look into if you've never heard of leaky gut syndrome. Lots and lots of information on the internet about it. Certainly you can tune back in here where I talk about all things gut and celiac disease and still sick. Well, I hope with this step you won't be.